Okay, so it's been a little while since the last video, but in this one we're going to be covering something that we're more than likely going to be using again in the near future, and I will be discussing, well, things we could use it for. So, to get started, we are going to be setting up a DAISY server. I'm not going to show you how to set it up or anything, but when we develop our, like in this video, as I'm writing the scripts, we're going to be using... We're going to be running the mission on the server. We're not going to be doing DAISY offline mode, as you can see here. So what we're modifying is MP missions, DAISY offline, and init.c, just like before. So in here, what we're going to be discussing, first off, is overriding functions. What we're going to be doing is overriding the tick scheduler function. And we're going to make it, well, show you how to use the chat so you can send some messages and stuff like that which I'm just going to be showing for example. Then we're going to be going over static variables. And you'll we'll see why here in a little bit. Now, what we're really going to end up doing for just the end result, not sure why I'm highlighting that, but we're going to have it every five seconds, we're going to have it just write a message in the chat. So pretty much the on, well, the tick scheduler method, that, think of it like it runs every frame. So, for instance, when I run the server, and I just have it continually, I, like it's just faster than your eyes can really keep up for, is I guess a way to put it. So if we can go ahead and get started. First thing we're talking about is overriding functions. So here's our init.c, just like before. And I'm going to scroll down. We're going to be in this class of custom mission. Just going to scroll down to the very bottom here and we're going to do our override function so as you can see here by the starting equipment setup it already uses it so that's pretty much what we're going to follow so we're going to do override void is the type tick scheduler as you can see it takes in a variable it just says float time slice but my thing gets in the way so just do time slice and set it up just like you would a normal method. So now in here, anything that we want, like if we want to have something run just on each tick, we would put our code in here to do so, which is what we're going to be doing. So now we're going to be in the chat, so I can go ahead and show you how to print something out to the server. Well, not to the server, but it'll write it in the chat for us to see. We can go by get game, then it is get, no, oh, sorry, chat, player. As you can see, it's one is the chat channel, and the second parameter is the string that we want to send into it. So for now, we can just do the first chat channel, and we're going to just do a test. So my test message. And just to show you how fast it's actually running, I want to show you, I'll just print out a variable for it. So static and i equals zero. I'll be covering statics here in a second. Plus i dot to string, sorry, and i plus plus. So now that's going to print out this message. My message, then it's going to, first one's going to be zero, my message one, my message two, so on and so on. So we're going to go ahead and file save and launch the server. Now, what static variables do is, so this is where we set it up. So if we were to do a normal int i equals zero, and this method were to run once, it would print out a message zero, then it would increment i to one. But then when this method runs again, it's going to set i back to zero. So it's going to keep printing out my message zero. It's not going to actually print out, like it's not going to actually continually increment the variable, so it's not going to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Max that that's going to reach is 1, because it keeps getting reset every time that method runs. So what we can do by putting the word static before it, that essentially tells it that we only want it to be set once as a way to visualize it. So we set it to 0 once. It's not going to be touched again. So you can see here, from the time I double-clicked on launch server, we're already in the 16,000s, and you can see how fast that's incrementing up each second. So, but you also see i is not getting reset. Well, the variable that we're printing out, 
And that is because it is static. Where's the server? There it is. So that's what static does. It's so this isn't actually the case, but think of it like this. It runs it once, this line, and it never runs it again. That's not how it works, like I said, but just think of it that way. So you can keep so let's say you did outside the method. And that's just how it's kinda gonna go. <laughs> so that should have covered those two. Now next, we will combine the two to print out the current game time. So we're going to go ahead and get the game time. So I'm just going to change this to int current time equals get game dot get time. Now this would return the current end game time. I don't know what it actually is going by. That's going to store it in current time. And I just showed you how to pretty much already string across messages. So if we wanted to print out current time, that's all we will do. So instead of actually showing this doing it again in game, you're, you can probably already visualize what it's going to do. It's literally getting the in game time, but it's getting it as a pretty big number. So after like 50 seconds, it's going to look like 50. That's essentially 50 seconds because it's going by milliseconds. So from the time that the server is up, it's going up by one in milliseconds. So one two, three, so on and so on. So now we want to change it by, like I said, five seconds. So if we want to change it by five seconds, that will essentially be 5,000 or 5,000 milliseconds. So it went from 50 seconds to 55 seconds. So one way we can change that is to convert from milliseconds to just seconds. And because I I'm just kind of stupid and don't really remember things, a little memory. You can either take this number, 55,000, which I have a calculator here, and you can multiply it by 0.001. See, we get 55 seconds. Or you can divide it by 1,000. You'll get the same result. Now, if you get a decimal value, such as 55,750, what did I hit? Oh, number lock. 750 times 0 0.001 you'll see it returns a decimal value so one way that we can get around that is by instead of we don't necessarily need to use a float because it's going to return a decimal we can still use an integer and it's going to work just fine but it's going to either round itself up or down so if you remember from elementary school hopefully if it's greater than 0.5 it's going to get rounded up so let's say if this was, let's say the value of our side is 55,000, well, eh, yeah, 55,600. So that's what we get, 55,600, so that's 55 sec, well, 55.6 seconds. Times that by 0 0.001, 55.6. Now if we had this getting stored in the integer, that integer value would hold 56, won't hold 55. You should be able to kind of see where I'm going by that by now. Hopefully. If not, go back to school. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and what we already have a setup as an integer, so we're going to multiply it to convert it from milliseconds to seconds. So just multiply by point oh oh one, or you can divide it depending on whatever you want to do. And since we want to print out the, all right, maybe I didn't write it down, but what I wanted to show you was how can we, we can use this to run whatever script we want, but let's say we wanted it to only run once every, you know, two minutes, once every 10 minutes, once every five seconds or something along those lines. Well, that's where the static variable comes into play, and we can do that very easily. So we already know whatever this is going to be, it's going to round up or down. So it's just normal integer value. So if it's 55 seconds, we get 55. So let's say we want it to run every 5 seconds. We would want to compare it simply by 5. We don't have to go by a millisecond value, so it'll make it much easier for us to read. 
So what we can do to kind of have our little control is just do a static int and I'm going to call it in time for new time and just set it to zero. So it's going to run at the very first tick. So now we can do if current time is greater than or equal to in time run whatever we have in here. And for us, we want to print out that message. So this will run it at the very first second that it runs. Well, as the game goes, at the very first five seconds. So we can also have a little... Nope, oh, sorry. Plus five. So we can also pretty much set this up how we want it as well. I'll show you that here in a second. So what we can also we need to do set in time equals current time. Otherwise, it's going to continually run on each tick. So what's going on is if current time, which is a value similar to like let's we'll use fifty or sorry fifty for fifty seconds. So if fifty is greater than or equal to in time, which is set to zero on the very first run plus five. So if 50 is greater than 5, which it is, we want to print out a message. Then right after that, we want to set in time to be equal to current time. Actually, we really don't need to make this static either. But yeah, we do, sorry. So when that happens, we want it in time to equal current time. So in time now equals 50. So what we can do again is every, let it run a bunch of times. Now current time equals 54. Well, end time equals 50. And current time equals 54. So 50, well, 54 minus 50, that's 4. That's not, we want to run every 5 seconds. So which why we add this little plus 5 here. So once current time gets up to 55, that'll mean it's greater than or equal to, in our case equal to, end time plus 5 because in time was equal to the previous current time, which was 50. So it goes 50 plus 5. So once current time now equals 55, we're going to run what's in the if statement again. Now when it bumps up to 60, because in time is now 55, run what's in the if statement again. And it's just going to keep going and going until whatever you set up to run, well, to end it. So we can also simply change it. We can just do int message delay we're just going to set it to equal to five just to so we have a little bit of a cleaner view so we'll go ahead and file save run the server and, yeah. and we're on pretty much the last portion and i'm trying to get videos out more and more regularly but with as you can see by the date if you're in the united states and I don't know, possibly somewhere else. Finals are pretty much literally right here now, happening, so <laughs> a little busy. So doing something similar to this can be extremely useful. So let's say you wanted to have some events happen. This is kind of how you can control the timing of the events. Alright, so you see right now it's printing out 46. Next one's 51. The next one after that should be 56. Go on. It's not spamming the message or anything. All it's doing is printing out every five seconds because that's how we have it just set up. So this can be, you know, it's already been done but I feel like it there should be an actual video on it that could be useful for uh, for instance you want it to run each tick you can make a safe zone out of that you can get you can see at the top right here our players X Y and Z coordinates so simply the logic behind a safe zone is let's say this entire town was covered we would have I guess you would have it the coordinates based up right in the dead center of the town and if the player's x, y, z, whatever position was x distance away from that town, depending on how big you have the zone set up, 
you can completely just remove or make it so the player doesn't have any damage or do whatever else you want when the player is in the zone. That's kind of up to you. So that's something that overriding this specific function can be used for, and that's something we're going to be covering in a future video here once I have a little bit more time and can tinker around with it. So, hopefully you learned something and that made sense. I felt that that was quite useful to learn, so, well, good luck.